politicians remove the memorial so voters put them in unemployment line. Two councilwomen in Iowa learn the hard way what happens when you ignore the voice of the people after they voted to remove a popular veterans memorial from a city park. Carolyn Formanick and April Verwers both lost their council seats in November 2015, just one day after supporting the removal of a wooden silhouette of a soldier kneeling before a cross, according to the Des Moines Register. Their decision came after Americans United for the separation of church and state sent a letter in August asking the city to remove the memorial from public property because of its religious aspect. The city council voted 3-2 to approve a plan to move the memorial to private property. The controversial move on the eve of the election prompted many voters to oust those responsible, primarily Formanick and Verwers. The other council member who voted in favor of removing the memorial did not seek re-election, according to the Washington Times. The silhouette had been placed in the city park by the local chapter of the American veterans, who also have a painted Freedom Rock on the site. The Register reported. Al Larson, an Oxville resident and Vietnam War veteran, made the silhouette as a memorial to an Army private who was killed in the war. The cross, which was the basis for the Americans United complaint, was meant to symbolize a grave marker, similar to the ones at Normandy American Cemetery in France. Amvid's Post 63 spokesman Don Zout said the original memorial was not meant to offend anybody. W.E. didn't see it as a religious symbol, he explained, according to W.H.O. Instead, it was simply supposed to depict a warrior saying goodbye to another warrior. Some members of the city council and Mayor Brian Hatch were reportedly concerned about how much it would cost the city to involve itself in a First Amendment legal battle with Americans United. I hope we can kind of achieve the best of both worlds, Hatch said, according to the Register. We avoid a costly lawsuit and at the same time we still have the silhouette memorial up honoring the veterans, right across the road hopefully, on private property. However, for the thousands of people who wanted to keep the memorial on city property, the move was anything but honorable. Rick Kingery, who filled one of the council seats, said the council should have listened to the people. I think if that many people come together for a cause, that that you probably need to listen to them he said, according to WHO. In fact, several thousand people had attended a rally in August to support keeping the memorial in its original place, the Register reported at the time. Despite their efforts and the defeat of council members responsible for moving the memorial, the silhouette was eventually taken down and moved to a private property, just across the street from the park. In its place, a bronze statue of a soldier holding a rifle and a helmet was placed and dedicated at a Veterans Day ceremony that year. There's nothing offensive about a soldier kneeling before a cross, whether for religious purposes or to honor another fallen soldier. What is offensive, however, is removing a veterans memorial against the wishes of an entire community because a national activist group complained. It's unfortunate that the memorial was taken down. But a powerful message remains in the fact that those who voted to do so were swiftly given the boot. Our national and state leaders should take note. You can't trample on our voices without consequences. Like and share this article on Facebook and Twitter if you think this veterans memorial should have been left in its place. What do you think about these city council women being ousted after supporting the removal of a veterans memorial? Memorial.